A lot of the areas where the votes would be coming in for a couple of these states, for example, Arizona, are thought to be Democratic areas and therefore there could be a change. Uh, Arizona is an area where the, um, the Republicans have belatedly been saying that, look, you know, Arizona is ours. Uh, however, it, that doesn't appear to be the case on the ground and with more votes coming in from a lot of the counties which have typically been Democratic counties, there's an expectation that Arizona could in fact uh, remain uh, with or, or could go the way of the uh, of the Democrats. So let's tell you what what has taken place now in the last several hours. Joe Biden and the Democrats have taken a huge step in the last what 12 odd hours towards capturing the White House. Why? Because they've got wins at this stage in Michigan and Wisconsin, bringing them close to a majority. But uh, Trump has been alleging, as have the Republican leaders, mass fraud. They demand a halt to the vote counting process. And there are a slew of legal cases which have already been taking place. Now, Kamala Harris, uh, Joe Biden's running mate, along with Biden, have uh, gone on record. In fact, Biden making a statement saying that while he wasn't declaring victory yet, uh, he did say that when the count is finished, we believe we will be the winners. So what has exactly happened, which is important, the, the northern battlegrounds of Michigan and Wisconsin have been flipped with Biden reaching 253 in a very conservative estimate uh, against 214 for Trump. The magic mark, remember, and this is reflected in the, in, in the bottom of the screen in that uh, panel, 270 is the magic mark. That's what you need to win to become president of the United States, Biden at 253. And what I will be explaining to you is um, there are a couple of important states left, uh, several of them which are likely to go to um, the Democrats. So getting across to 270, it appears would be easier than it would be for Trump, who is presently at 214. That gap uh, is so large at this stage that even if Trump were to do exceptionally well in a, a few of the other states, uh, that would not necessarily be enough to take him above that 270 mark. So. Um, the key states over here, and I, I'm wondering if we have that graphic available, uh, which is remaining, the states remaining. Do we have the states remaining graphic? Uh, we need to have that graphic uh, soon. Uh, Arizona, Georgia, Nevada, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, and Alaska. Uh, this is where um, the battle for the United States uh, remains. Um, and in this, Biden is leading in, um, he's leading in Arizona for starters, and he's leading in Nevada, albeit less than 1%. So very narrow, but there is a sense that Pennsylvania, where the results would come in tomorrow, which is 20 electoral seats, though Biden is down 3% at this time, the percentage of votes counted is 88%. And uh, a lot of the early votes, which are predominantly thought to be Democratic votes, in addition to late votes, which if, if they are to come in, might actually make uh, a switch possible over there. Though it needs to be mentioned that that remains difficult or challenging for the Democrats even now. Where does that leave us in some of the other states? North Carolina, 15 uh, electors, so an important state. 95% have been counted uh, and it's down a percent for Biden and up a percent uh, in terms of Trump. The Trump lead at 1% only. So again, it's very close. The fact of the matter is that Trump cannot afford to lose anything. Uh, going forward. I think that's the sense uh, that a lot of people have at this stage. All right, we're going to go across to uh, uh, our panelist, Durab uh, Sopariwala joins us again. Suhasni Haider uh, with us, Michael Kugelman um, and uh, Marty uh, Subramanian. Thank you all very much for being with us. Um, Mr. Subramanian, let me come to you first. What, is, uh, what does Trump now realistically need to do uh, to win this election on the basis of numbers. Uh, good morning to you, Vishnu, and to your viewers in India. Um, you, I, I think right now the chances are uh, really quite remote. I think uh, the only way uh, there is some possibility is uh, if Biden loses both Arizona and Nevada, or at least one of the two, and wins all the rest, So, which is a tall order. Um, because the indications are Arizona is already almost done. So Nevada is still a bit close, but still in Biden's favor. So even assuming Pennsylvania, North Carolina, and Georgia uh, move to uh, the Trump account, and of course, Alaska, we can count also, 
um, I think it's it's basically impossible. Uh, the, as you mentioned in your introduction, uh, between the 11 votes in uh, in, um, uh, Arizona. in Arizona and the six in six in Nevada, uh, Biden is done. He's got the 270. Uh, so my feeling is we ought to look beyond the elections into what will happen next. I think we'll see a lot of uh, court battles uh, in the next few days. Uh, I think the battles will take place in several state courts and several federal courts all across the country, um, and certainly in the battleground states. And I think pretty soon we might see a batch of cases being uh, taken up by the Supreme Court. So this will be, uh, I think, a long battle. Hopefully it will be decided soon, but it may take uh, certainly a few days, if not weeks. So, Hasni, would the margin of victory actually uh, determine whether or not the Trump camp is determined to go to various courts? Uh, Georgia, for example, they've been saying that, look, it's too close and that they would be pushing for, uh, Wisconsin also, they'd be pushing for a recount. But yes. if uh, there emerges a situation when the numbers for the Biden camp become far more substantial and there is a huge expectation that that may happen, it could even happen in Pennsylvania, we don't know, then it doesn't make any logical sense for Trump to be delaying the inevitable, right? Well, look at it this way, uh, Vishnu. Uh, as long as the vote counting continues and that there is no spanner put in the, those works uh, today by the three challenges that uh, Mr. Trump's team has uh, now filed in three different states, so long as the vote counting continues, this election will end when the last vote is counted. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that they will not stop the counting of the vote. Um, if that is the case, uh, then these margins, as you said, you know, every state in America uh, works its own uh, kind of special formula for when you can actually, uh, uh, you know, call for a recount. There are some states that have an automatic trigger of a recount uh, when the margins are very small, but some of those those margins have to be smaller than 2,000 votes. Right. Uh, there are others that allow you to um, uh, uh, to challenge it and go for a recount. There are others that say you can only go for a recount if the margin is this small. So each state will have to be looked at separately. Remember, there were nine uh, contentious states uh, yesterday. Uh, today, if it's down to about uh, three where Mr. Trump has uh, posed a legal challenge, uh, then that means that's where the focus is going to be. Uh, I don't think that it is possible to decide that until, as I said, the last vote is counted. Because as you pointed out, you know, you have a sudden dump of uh, mail-in ballots that swing Arizona one way uh, or uh, Pennsylvania the other way. Look at Pennsylvania, for example. Yesterday, if you were just looking at percentages between the two candidates, 53% for Trump, 44% uh, uh, for Biden at one point. Uh, right now, they're actually, you know, it's just much, much closer than that. We're looking at 48.1 uh, for Biden versus 50.7. The numbers are shrinking between those two. Pennsylvania, as you said, uh, may change hands. Arizona was moving the other way. Nevada, uh, I think uh, they are waiting to finish the, the last count because uh, uh, I think they've even made an announcement that they won't announce the results until about uh, six o'clock our time this uh, this evening. Uh, with Nevada, of course, um, uh, if if it does go Mr. Biden's way, he's ahead over there. Uh, Mr. Biden's over the top. He hits 270. Let's also remember, Vishnu, there is an element of optics over here. Uh, you know, one of the reasons why uh, the Bush-Gore election, for example, was settled easy, more easily um, uh, without contentions by, uh, by, by the end mm -hmm. was because there was a concession, because there was the optics that Bush had won. If the optics see Mr. Biden being able to say 270 are in my corner, I think it will be that much more difficult for Team Trump. And it's interesting that we are talking about Team Trump because many of the Republicans have actually been critical of what Mr. Trump said at that very premature announcement that he had won. Go through the state's remaining graphic. Durab, come in on this. Uh, let's bring that up full screen. All right. Okay. So states remaining. Here's where things stand presently. Uh, you've got Arizona, Georgia, Nevada, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, and Alaska. Uh, all of these states uh, put together account for 71 electors, right? So essentially 71 
votes by electors which would uh, obviously influence one party or the other. Now, let's have this up full screen. Let's have this up full screen for a moment. Uh, let's take a look at uh, Arizona where there are 11 seats, uh, three uh, for Biden. 3% uh, is the lead for Biden now. Trump down by 3%. 86% have been counted. Uh, this is where the Republican camp appears to be uh, clutching on to effectively nothing when they say that, look, there is only 86% done and uh, we would still do well. Uh, so, Dorab, let's, again, Arizona, the point you were mentioning earlier on is that some of the counting from a lot uh, from some key areas has yet to come in and that counting has typically been among people who vote democrat is that right no, we should not now let's start looking at votes there are 450000 votes to be counted in arizona currently biden has a lead of 90000 and the votes that are coming up coming predominantly from maricopa and pima counties which are which all these counties are originally democrat republican but they have turned democratic and they account for 76% of the population of Arizona. Now, in 450,000 votes to come, in a state where you're trailing to overrule that, I think it's just not possible when the, the votes are coming yeah. from counter Democratic. Yeah. And okay. that applies actually to many of the other states. I mean, look at something like, say, North Carolina. Yes. 250,000 votes to come. Trump yes. is leading by 80,000. Yes. So if it splits, say, 75-25, or look at Nevada, of course, is leading anyway. Nevada could turn because there are 180,000 votes to come and the lead for Biden is only 8,000. Look at, say, Georgia, which is the most interesting one. I mean, he was, Trump was sweeping that state. 250,000 votes to come and his lead is only 30,000. Right. So if the vote splits, say, 100, of those 250,000 go 100, you know, 150,000 to 100,000, he overturns that lead. And the late votes are showing that they're predominant Democratic votes coming from areas like Atlanta, etc., and the suburbs. So I think he has a good chance of flipping their state. Then you come to Pennsylvania, where there are 660,000 votes to come, and the current lead is 150,000 for Trump. Now there, Biden needs to do that much better, like win, say, 400,000 votes. But again, in terms of what he's been doing in those areas, like Philadelphia, it is not impossible. Right. So I think, you know, all these states, I don't think there's anything except for perhaps Nevada looking very much Trump's way. Okay. And look at the count on your okay. chart. He's at 253. Right? And, and that's a conservative number because some of no, no, Arizona already. No, no, I'm just saying 253 you know? if yeah. even Pennsylvania, the party is over. Just one state. They don't have to worry about anything else. Right. Because that's what it did last time too, if you remember. Right. He won Pennsylvania last year. So Republicans by. insist that Pennsylvania is theirs, right? They, they say that the lead of 3% is still substantive enough for them to believe that. Yeah, but it's 150,000 votes. I know. So the bulk is yet to be counted. To come. Yeah, yeah. But they would say that those votes what the lead is, which, but how which, much there is to which come. are yet to be counted would go their way. Uh, that, that would be their argument. Oh, be that as it may, I want to go across to Michael Kugelman right now. Um, is it your, your fear that, you know, this numbers game is going in one direction right now, uh, that, you know, this is going to end up in court and it's going to be nasty, vindictive, uh, litigious, and it's going to go on for a while. All of you in, in America will have to be very patient. Well, I mean, as, as you'll recall, uh, Trump uh, the other day said something to the effect of that he, he likes to win, but he doesn't like to lose or that he's a bad loser or something like that. So he was essentially telegraphing, uh, as he already has, that uh, he's not going to go down easy. And clearly, as, as we've been discussing, his back is up against the wall at this point. Uh, all, all indications show that uh, Biden is the very heavy favorite at this very point. Um, to uh, to get those 270 electoral college votes. And uh, indeed, we've already heard that um, the, the Trump administration has uh, filed several lawsuits, which I think were mentioned earlier. Um, it does seem to me that they don't carry much weight. Uh, you know, I've heard, for example, that um, there, one lawsuit involves um, trying to get better access to voting uh, obs uh, observations, even though no one there's been plenty of, of observers and no one has complained about not being able to observe the, the ballots. So that's a bit strange. 
But, um, yeah, I, I, I do fear that it could get a bit ugly. Uh, we're dealing with the president who doesn't seem like he wants to go down easily. Um, it is true, though, that I think this was mentioned, that uh, even within the White House, within the Republican Party, people are really starting to worry about uh, optics and that he's, he's looking really, you know, really like a child, like just a really bad loser that doesn't know that now is not the time to be threatening to do things when he doesn't really have much chance um, to succeed. But that wouldn't necessarily stop him. No, it um, wouldn't. Not but, at all. Uh, you know, we just have to hope Didn't that... Didn't he say uh, that he wasn't going out of the White House? He said that some time ago, that he's going nowhere. It's like he has a lease signed for the White House at this stage. Right, yeah. No, this, this is exactly true. And this is, of course, a president that not too long ago had uh, boasted about um, claiming that he would have three terms as president. And, of course, as you know, no, you uh, it's not that. possible to, to have a third term these days. So Why stop this is clearly three? someone that... <laughs> all right. All right. Look, I need to take a short break. I'd like to thank you all very much for being with us. Uh, in our next couple of bulletins, we'll, we'll try and make it even uh, clearer. What is the road to victory for Biden? What is the road to victory uh, for Trump? Uh, and, and so that you, you have the numbers in front of you. In fact, we've got it up right now. Uh, let's just stay with this for a few more minutes. The road, uh, the path to victory for Trump uh, is this. He has to win Pennsylvania. He has to win Georgia. He has to win uh, North Carolina as well. Uh, and he has to win Nevada. Uh, and I, I think he would need to win Arizona as well. Uh, but the path to victory for Biden uh, is much, much closer. He needs to win Arizona and he needs to win Nevada. Remember, over here again, he doesn't need Pennsylvania, which we've been, which we've been speaking about. So what the Republicans have been saying is that, no, 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 how do you assume that he's winning Arizona? Uh, we are. But, uh, you know, the fact is Biden is maintaining a substantive lead at this stage. We'll take a short break, come back with more.